Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. This is SiliconANGLE TV's continuous coverage of HP Discover, and we've got a surprise guest, Charles Curran of Valhalla Partners, stopped by. Charles, welcome to theCUBE. Good to see you, Good buddy. to see you again. Thank you for spending some time here. Sure. Uh, Charles, uh, really active in, uh, in, 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 in venture capital. Of course, storage is your, your specialty. Yep. And uh, why don't you start off, tell the crowd a little bit about Valhalla. Sure, real quick. Yeah, so Cumulo, some people refer to as a uh, as son of uh, a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, nobody helped. Oh, uh, guys. Let's start again. Yeah, no, you, you, know, you can get that through me. They'll hear you through me, but just put that on. Where do I put it? Just like that. There you go. Boost me up. All right. Okay, there you go. No, they, they could hear you through my mic, but uh, no, we just started but let's, let's repeat that, though. So okay. let, me, let me reset. So we're here with a surprise guest. Charles Curran stopped by. Uh, tech team taking a nap, that's okay. They're doing a great job here. And um, so, tell us about Valhalla, start there. Okay, Valhalla is a half a billion dollar venture firm. We're based in DC, but we invest all over the US. Uh, we're stage agnostic, we're focused on two sectors, next gen infrastructure, with I, which I run, with help from Farah, who hopefully will be here in a minute. Uh, and uh, she's busy with some HP bigwigs. And uh, we do a lot of data storage stuff, left hand networks, acquired by HP, of course, been very successful for them. Nirvonics, the partner of HP, uh, Solid Fire uh, and Nirvonix both have some left-hand alums, and Cumulo, which is uh, founded by some of the key technical people from Isilon. Son of Isilon, right? That's uh, no, no comment. Stealth, I would say it's founded by some people who company. did good things in, in <laughs> yeah. Seattle. Can't say much, but you're happy about that deal. We right? are I mean, very happy, and others are happy, and we're we're loving. What's it. the nuance there? Can you talk about that? I mean, um, you guys doing Series A stuff? Um, sure. Well, I'll, I'll share the strategy. So, so we had a lot of success with Dave Wright at Solid Fire, where. He was an experienced entrepreneur, two wins by the time he was in his late 20s. He sold, built and sold Jungle Disk to Rackspace, and he went to Boulder and has about 50 people, almost half of whom came from Left Hand. Left Hand, as you probably know, pioneered uh, Scale-Out Sands, and they had the best technical team uh, in the Scale-Out uh, Sand business. Uh, Ecologic did some wonderful things on ease of, uh, ease of use and channel. God bless Paula and JJ and their new project. Uh, hat tip, JJ. Uh, and uh, Left Hand had some really great scale out technology. So he hired a core tech team from uh, Left Hand other places and has a world class, all flash, service provider focused, uh, primary uh, storage systems play. Uh, and we basically took that model that is working for us in Boulder to Seattle and are building a team with veterans from some great places. So it seems like the, I mean the, I wonder if you could talk about that, that strategy because it seems like you got, as an entrepreneur, you don't have a ton of choices, right? You've yep. got, fr got friends and family who want to raise a half a million bucks. Sure. Um, or are going to raise, let's say, uh, maybe a million dollars, maybe two yeah. million dollars from, from Super Angels, and then maybe it's you know eight million from uh, Andreessen Horowitz or something sure. like that. And those are kind of the three venture products yeah. for an entrepreneur to choose from. Um, but you guys are well, sort it's, of it, it's have a taken point. a different strategy there, right? So the, the big data stuff and the storage stuff that Wikibon is doing, by the way, hats off to Wikibon and your growth. Thank you. You've had a fantastic year. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, we're, do, we're doing well, I think you guys are probably doing better in terms of growth. Um, you know, these projects, uh, Vertica, Green Plum, Left Hand, Isilon, they raised 50, 100 million dollars. So the seed business hasn't really touched them. We're, we're somewhat, we think, pioneers in doing large scale seed right. investing in right. infrastructure projects. Seed investing is incredibly mature in the dot com space because five kids out of Stanford can go build the new Angry Birds or, or Instagram, you can build an Instagram on seed funding. You might ultimately raise eight million from Andreessen Horowitz, as they did, and then sell for a billion to Facebook, God bless them. <laughs> but that's a very robust and proven model uh, where you can get a product to market on half a million, a million dollars. In storage, it might take 50 million to get a product to market and 100 million to get to break even. Uh, that may be coming in with Extreme IO, we'll probably talk about. But uh, our theory is that uh, a two million dollar seed deal at a strong price for proven teams from the big wins from yesteryear uh, is a good kind of uh, catalyst to bring people together to build something new. Uh, and we're seeing A rounds for really concept stage companies coming in around 20 million dollars at valuations that are uh, nice. <laughs> Respectful to the entrepreneur and their yeah. wonderfulness. Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> bubblicious. So, uh, but but now it's not a bubble. It's, so, it's, <laughs> it's 
fully uh, reflecting the wonderfulness of well, entrepreneurs. Well, but I mean, look, look at the Facebook IPO, right? I mean, it's it. I think I think there's a there's a dose of reality in that. Yeah. I think that's good. Yeah. You know, um, I think if it were a true bubble, you know, people would just ignore it. Oh, they want to price it at 38, 40, 50, whatever. You know, and there'd be appetite for it, and there wasn't. It's almost like the market said, "Wait a minute." I know yeah. there was Europe involved, but I thought I thought that was a healthy sign. What do you think? Well, here's my bias. You guys cover a lot of the M&A deals, and you cover it better than probably anybody in in storage and big data. Those deals are all working. Green Plum is working. Vertica is working. Data Domain is working. Left Hand is working. Ecologic is working. Freepart is working. Isilon is working. Most of those storage ones are a billion dollars of revenue, you know, two three years after they got bought. So. Um, What's happening is forward pricing. So now EMC realizes that their core business is going to be displaced by Flash. God bless Fusion IO. I know you just had them here. Uh, and you know, maybe I, I heard a senior executive from a company that will remain nameless said to me last night that by 2015 there may be no more mechanical drives. It may be an all-flash world. 2015, an all-flash world. EMC is smart, and if Symmetrics is going away, uh, and Centera is going away, and so, uh, and if. Uh, three parts going away, and left hand, which we love, is going away, because you can't build legacy storage architectures and smash flash together with it. You need to build all flash architectures from the ground up, like SolidFire and others. Um, so EMC is smart, they realize that, uh, and they bought Extreme IO, which will be the first of many IPOs or M&As in, let's call it the all flash or mostly flash space. Yeah, so we had uh, Rich Napolitano on theCUBE uh, at EMC World, yeah. And I threw out the number, you know, 340 or whatever it was. He goes, we didn't announce the number, it was less yeah. than that or whatever it was. It was a big number. Yeah. Like you said, forward pricing. And, um, and that's, that is smart, I think. It's a recognition that the traditional architecture is not what's going to take us you know, into the next you know, 10, 15 years. EMC was not just years. smart enough to buy it, but they were also smart enough to invest in the company right. early and build trust and relationships so they got an inside track to acquire the company. So, it, it, you know, congrats Matt Olton, Rich. Uh, the boys, you did well with that one. So some of your, one of your companies, you know, like you mentioned Left Hand, um, we had David Scott on the yeah. Cube earlier, you know, 2.4 billion, you saw a huge wealth creation, I couldn't, I can't remember a uh, wealth creation of that magnitude, data domain, <laughs> Isilon, sure. Compellent, 3PAR, do you think Flash will be as large? It'll be bigger, and it'll be faster, uh, you know, uh, uh, Equalogic was probably the fastest storage company at 100 million revenue, Data Domain made it there a year faster, and Fusion IO, uh, just here on the Cube, made it two years faster. Yeah. And there will be others who are faster. So, Extreme IO, SolidFire, and Pure, if they, well, I guess Extreme IO is no longer independent, they have the potential to get to 100 million revenue even faster than Fusion IO because customers, OEMs, channel partners, vendors, analysts, thought leaders are realizing that uh, some of these apps need the 10x daemon speed of Flash and Flash is becoming mainstream. It's no longer a science project, it's being used by everybody. It's not just Facebook and mm. JP Morgan, and it's being a, used by everybody, mid-market. And there's a lot of opportunities. I mean, Fusion IO is at one end consumers. of the spectrum, and you got consumers, right? Yeah. That's driving the economics, and then you got, you know, you see Violin's booth out here, sure. we had Don Basil on, and yeah. uh, you know, $800 million valuation, he's raised, what, 160 million, I think? He's done well. I mean, Good it's, job, it's, Don. Good that's, job, uh, Peter Bell. Yeah, I mean, Hey, that's right, that's right, Highland Capital's in yeah. that deal, right? Who's yeah, not in that deal? SAP Ventures us. is in that deal. <laughs> Again, hats off, Don, hats <laughs> off, Peter. But so I want to go back to the conversation we were having earlier. A lot of entrepreneurs are afraid to take VC money at the, at the, at the seed level, because they're afraid that if the VC doesn't do a follow-on round, that sends a bad signal. But you guys have been able to successfully participate yeah. in that early run. Why is that? That's a great point. Okay, so there's two things. So if you look at companies like Left Hand in our portfolio, or Equalogic, 3PAR, Isilon, these were companies largely founded in the 99 to 2001 timeframe that raised A round money, and their B and C rounds happened in the 2002, 2003 timeframe, where founders were crushed economically, or let's say heavily diluted economically, and often lost power to the suits, guys like me. Uh, and the founders don't like that, and more importantly, the teams don't like that. The, the 100 guys at Left Hand who helped build Chambers and Mark Hayden and John Spires build San IQ, uh, they don't want to work for uh, a hired gun, they want to work for a founder. Uh, the SolidFire guys want to work for Dave Wright. Uh, the Cumulo guys want to work for Pete Godman. Uh, you know, so um, uh, the Extreme IO guys like working for their founders. Uh, and uh, so the moral of the story is, 
uh, we have been able to build trust with some really proven management teams who've already had multiple billion dollar exits to say that both in terms of economics, the high priced seed round and the high priced A round, large high priced A round, and in terms of power, uh, we're going to be able to provide uh, 3x the ownership to founders at liquidity than the old models. And that's not because of some magic trick, it's because of uh, confidence. Uh, we, we have uh, done the, I think, the most expensive seed investment ever in storage, and I believe we will probably have five term sheets at what will probably be the most expensive Series A in the history of storage soon, no comment on the company, absent the 99 time frame. I don't remember what Cereva did theirs at and those guys. Yeah, that stuff doesn't um, count. It doesn't, anyway. but, and, and, the, and, it, and it makes sense. Uh, be, and, and I'll tell you why it makes sense. Uh, you asked about the venture model. Uh, uh, the large investors in venture, the pension funds, universities, the fund of funds, they're getting literally 95% of the profits from venture investors from 1% of their investments. Mm -hmm. Twitter, Facebook, uh, Groupon, even with the slide, LinkedIn, Zynga, uh, a lot of them in dot coms. So even these two and a half billion exits, that's uh, like a pebble in the ocean compared to Facebook. And so all of the focus from our bosses, the LPs who invest in venture, is find the trillion dollar hit, find the hundred billion dollar hit, find the 10 billion dollar hit. And where do you look? You look for the guys who built Isilon, the guys who built Data Domain. There's multiple companies founded by the core team from Data Domain. They're all doing great. Uh, Left Hand, uh, Equalogic, uh, others. So uh, it, it, it makes sense. Uh, so you, you, but you have to build trust. You have to demonstrate that you're going to build the company around the founders, both in terms of power and economics, and not all VCs are comfortable with I that. think that point about trust is key, because remember, what, a year, year and a half ago, you had a situation where some of the VCs were, sending, you know, were collaborating with yep. Uh, 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 super angels that were acting as scouts and they weren't transparent about it, that whole thing blew up and a lot of entrepreneurs said, whoa, yeah. we don't trust this model. That's why you know you got to love the Andreessen Horowitz play because sure. you got entrepreneurs, they're friends of entrepreneurs. Sure. Now, of course, they made a huge move with Skype. Sure. Okay, well, okay, we're going to, they raised 50 million, right? Yeah. <laughs> they said, okay, we're going to do seed money. They ended up buying Skype and then selling it for you know, a huge amount to, to Microsoft, brilliant move. But that model is interesting and I wanted to, to ask you about what you thought about Chris Lynch going to sure. Atlas Venture. What's your, what's your take on that? Chris He's Lynch. an entrepreneur, you know, fr entrepreneur friendly, sp sprinkling money around, big data companies back, and he ends up at Atlas Ventures. Is that a, is that a play out of the Andreessen Horowitz playbook? It, it is, because Chris Lynch is probably one of the few guys on the East Coast as aggressive as Peter and Ben and Mark and uh, Frank Scott at Andreessen Horowitz, and uh, he will do well. Uh, and his partners at Atlas, uh, Ryan Moore and Jeff Fagan, are aggressive, um, and uh, he, he will do well. So and entrepreneurs know, trust him, right? Entrepreneurs trust him because yeah. he's, he's an entrepreneur. He founded a Copia, built it with his bare hands. Mm -hmm. He's had success with Cheng Wu, another founder, running sales for him at Aeropoint. He's been a successful entrepreneur, and obviously Vertica. Um, so uh, I, I think um, that's the type of guy who brings energy, he brings recruiting, he brings CEO experience, he brings uh, relationships with OEMs, um, entrepreneurs are getting savvy, and they are working us, we're getting worked hard by our bosses, uh, they're our bosses too, and they work us hard. Uh, and, and you know, so we're all being judged on our value prop, and that's why Andreessen is doing so well. They, they have delivered a clear value prop to entrepreneurs in terms of biz dev and higher valuations, and 99% of VCs make fun of them for overpaying, and lo and behold, they're in eight of the 10 best deals in the last five yeah, years, yeah, so. Right. So how smart. do you and Farah build that type of trust? Uh, with with the entrepreneurs, I mean, you're competing in a in a, in a unique way, and I'm really interested in that model it, that you guys are doing. It takes time, and that's also part of the reason we're doing seed investing. Is then you have a year to build it with them. Mm -hmm. uh, so we like to spend a year or two years. I spent three and a half years with Bill Chambers before we invested in Left Hand Network. So we knew, knew each other personally. Our wives knew each other. Uh, he knows my kids by name. Um, you know, uh, you have to build trust. If you just meet a hot B round. It's, and it's two week shotgun to term sheet, then it, you're just going on references. He's going to call people he trusts and say, hey, how is that guy on your board? And that might be enough, um, uh, and that happens. But in terms of if you're really going to be partners for seven years and build a company to last, uh, it helps in both directions. We want to get comfortable with them too. We're going to give them a lot of money in our brand. You know, we, we want to get to know them. So, uh, so uh, quick, very, very, real quick, uh, so SolidFire, we had uh, them on at EMC yep. World. Looks like they're going through the rounds with their betas and 
looking all like, like it's on track. We're excited about those guys going to market. They're doing great. He's good there. Nirvonix. Uh, He's doing fantastic. We had Scott we raised on. A big, we have uh, the hat tip to Coastal Ventures, uh, which has also been incredibly that's aggressive. That's huge, Get, bringing Coastal uh, Ventures uh, in. David Wyden, who I went to high school with, hat tip to Lakeside High School. Uh, he and Vinod and Sharish have spent a tremendous amount of time, and they have a Rolodex that is uh, among the best, if not the best, in Silicon Valley, and they brought it to bear to Nirvonix, and we're uh, grateful for it. So I probably had two calls with them already today. They're uh, they're fantastic. Uh, great. So. Well, listen, Charles. Thanks very much for coming by. Thanks, Good buddy. to see you. I'm glad you could make the time for us. Um, really appreciate it. Keep hiring. Keep growing. All right. Hey. Good work. You know it. All right. Keep it right there. We're right back with Colin Mahoney, uh, General Manager of Vertica. Keep it right there.